Alright guys, welcome back. Uh, we're going to do another uh, painting miniatures. This time I'm going to do a video based on how you would do a metallic miniature as well as a pterodon. Is it pterodon? Yeah. A pterodon for the um, lizard men. Uh, the first thing you're probably seeing from all of the you know, shiny, silver um metal pieces that I have is that they're uh, die cast. These are all die cast metal. They're meant to be this shiny so you can tell that they are indeed metal and you aren't ripped off. And um, once again, all of these pieces are have were given to me by my uh, stepfather, so I haven't bought, I haven't gone out have been able to go out and buy any of these and this is also from the same um, this is also the same uh, set that he gave me as well uh, meaning that these were given to me at the same time as the rest of the lizard men over in this box uh, the box I got myself but its contents were given to me at the same time I received these uh, as you can tell you know you've got your little stands for each of your indi individual pieces uh, temple guards that actually will make a, a larger brigade so it'll make it easier for me to build my my army this I'm gonna take a couple minutes to talk about this for anybody who isn't aware this is a modeling plastic a regular modeling plastic that you can mold to suit your needs um, my stepfather used them to keep there we go. To keep uh, his pieces together, you know, keep all of these together, but at the same time, uh, make it easier for him to take them off when he needed. I'm going to use them for modifications later on when I get more into that. Uh, as you saw in my last video, I really began. I began more of the lighter, you know, modding work. I don't know enough to start going into the uh, realms of taking a regular uh, unit, like a regular soar, and turning him into a completely uh, badass replica of a, uh, a heroic piece. But, you know, as you can see, these are all die casts. Now, you've got your little extra pieces like this. And uh, I think what I'm also going to do with my t uh, pterodon is show you a bit of how to put a pterodon rider uh you know paint it as well i had an i have one other pterodon rider and another that i painted that i'm more than likely going to go back over and paint again um let's see that should be everything i need to talk about in this so i'm gonna set that aside and we're gonna move on uh as you can see, still the same setup, still working with the, you know, webcam on a hat um, as well. Uh, I do believe my mixer is around here somewhere. I don't know where I put it. Um, nope, not over there. But, oh well, I prob I'm probably not gonna mix much, hopefully. And if I do, I know I've got a rag or something that'll help me out. Uh, never think you're not gonna need a piece. I should probably mention that now because I am looking completely stupid. By the way, I don't have my mixer. So I'm just gonna take a second to look around for my mixer and we're gonna take a quick minute to recuperate from this error. And we're back. Uh, as you can see, this magically reappeared under, uh, magically appeared underneath my fingers. Uh, I am a wizard. No, I'm, j I'm joking. Um, as it turned out, I'd left it by the sink where I'd washed it uh, from the last video. I'm gonna have to try to start making an effort to make sure all of my pieces are together before I start making these videos, so I don't have to trip all over my house to grab them. But anyway, we've got our water over here we've got the mixer we've got our paints and our glues the re remember if you if you haven't seen the last 
video or if you have and you've just forgotten because it's been three weeks or two weeks or whenever the red testers glue for plastic is a lot better and a lot stronger than the blue and the only reason I'm keeping this blue around is simply for the same reason you know for the, the reason of showing off that red is better than blue um, so we're just gonna set that way out there um, as you can tell die cast pieces don't come together as easily um, with their their uh, plastic counterparts and if I remember right the pterodons themselves are specifically uh, a die cast metal set only I don't know that for sure but that's what I'm going to go with uh, there we go yeah also also it's a little bit harder to remember which way these guys go I haven't built a pterodon in forever and the one I built just went to pieces he fell apart rather quickly um, but anyway like I said I am not sure if these guys are just die cast metal I don't know if they have plastic ones or not but you know as far as I know that is what the case is um, so since those require a stronger glue than our red uh, I've still got my super glue gorilla favored brand of mine and we're gonna use that to put this guy together um, let's see now where do we start well as per most of my other um, videos I'm gonna start with the largest pieces possible and work my way down <clears throat> so it's all going to be a matter of scheming but uh for i think what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna start off with a white to get rid of all that that metal shine I just gotta make sure the white i'm using is a good one yep um <clears throat> if you can tell you know that I, as you can tell from me clearing my throat i've got a lot of mucus built up uh in the body um i think i'm coming down with a little something i don't i don't particularly know i just think it's because i have a little too much dairy in my diet at the moment but uh bear with me on that uh let's see now brush that is appropriate for the job and uh if anybody was wondering i did take count of how many brushes i've got i've got a total of 52 brushes some of which are duplicates uh, of the others so i'm just gonna go ahead and we're gonna get this all nice and loaded we'll start with the wing just you know uh, number one is the first one I picked up and number two it just seems to me like the largest piece and I'm not gonna take the time to mathematically measure out the largest one I'm just gonna eyeball it um, following up on any of my recent activity uh, I've been making it making a large effort to make these videos better for you guys in terms of uh, making sure that I know what I'm talking about when it comes to like washes or inks or shading techniques and passing them on to you guys I know there's probably a bunch of that um, already out there but it never never hurts to have somebody word it a different way you know because sometimes you just need a different way of things being said for you to get them I know I need that done to me a lot uh, which is why I spend a lot of time making sure I I understand what I'm getting into by going to several different people uh, let's see now now for um For anybody wondering why I go through and paint the the uh, take so much time when I paint, you know, uh, video recording wise, as in, you know, I don't um, just speed through this and put in quick audio here and there on top of what I'm supposed to tell you about. It's because I feel that uh, actually watching someone over real time when they paint 
can give you an idea of um, strokes or, or how they go about um, uh, I, I don't really know how to word this you know but like I said at the, at the very beginning video that I put out aside from one that you probably should not watch and very bad voice acting involved um, it, the, the whole point of these videos again is just to help me get better and make sure I pr provide something useful to you guys but um anyway as I was saying uh, the reason I go real time is because I, I feel it lets you uh, I don't want to say learn more because you could probably learn more from somebody who's more experienced in these but I'm gonna say it gives you a more intimate sense of what's going on and it'll let me just you know ramble and speak freely to help uh, with my voice or not my voice but with my speech and uh, hopefully help you guys uh, establish some uh, some form of community the longer these videos are so that way if you're you know just sitting around in the comments you can just instead of hearing the same six minutes spiel over and over again you can just sit around for about an hour or two and just let the comments roll and throw yourselves around as needed but uh... hopefully i'll hopefully there will become a, a better reason for why i do these in real time the longer i'm in this video i think it'll also show progression in uh... in um... skill level and i think that's really going to be what what it comes down to is the the real time video uh the real time uh painting videos that I do will help show how I increase in skill level and how much better I'll I'm getting with each stroke um the reason I'm doing white is for the fact of uh there we go. Uh, upon watching a recent video, um, I learned that lighter colors, being your base coat, tend to make your other colors stand out more, uh, especially if you have a really um, dark colored um, miniature you plan on making later on, which works out perfectly for me because I have a tendency to make some very dark um, miniatures and so knowing that if I start with a lighter base and I decide to put a wash of any kind or something like that on there this will make that stand out more that is wunderbar to me I'm just going to turn this over lightly um, I'm not really using this particular piece as much, mainly because the magnifier, again, is only for small pieces, and something this large isn't really needed, especially when you're going into the large brush strokes. And metal on metal, I'm hoping, will not wear the other down as much, you know, if I keep it in there for shorter periods as opposed to my plastic pieces, which can get more of a dent in them, and then I can just paint it over or mold it into a way that will eventually look better and I'm just going to lay that over like that um, let's see now just loading my brush up um, as you can tell there's a little hole right here in the center that hole is for this peg you just wedge it in there. Oh shit. Nope, oh, well, that sucks. That really sucks. That's alright. Because we have this down here, which holds, you know, two other little pieces. But the idea is you wedge it in there nice and tight, 
and it sits there. Then you just simply wedge in this piece and that'll hold it straight up. Now the reason for this is to give off a better idea of flight instead of just going there you go <laughs> which you know you want to do and um, um, they they have ways I've seen a lot of really good miniature uh, people who have taken away to camouflage this uh, little pyre no not pyre tower tier or whatever you'd like to call it uh, from view so it gives a better image of, of flight this one's not going to work too particularly well because we've got two little bubbles in there and bubbles tend to take away the illusion you know what I'm saying but anyway um, we're just about done with our large pieces and soon we'll move on to the little itty bitty head and maybe the the even itty bittier uh, pterodon rider and um, as a quick um, minute to show a pterodon rider is the same as a skink uh, warrior the only di difference is their sizing because you have to make it appear as if the uh, pterodon is larger than the somewhat larger than the, the, the skink itself however I'm hoping that, he, that later on they increase the size of the pterodon and I don't know how later productions of the pterodons have have been as these are pretty old um, models at least that, as that is what I was told is that these are very old productions of the the pterodons and the temple warriors and so on so I don't know if they have grown or shrunk in any way I, I would hope that they would have grown uh, the pterodons a bit to help uh, give a better demonstration of size differentials and I know my last couple of videos where you guys have been on my head has not really been very um, what is the word um, helpful in displaying what all I'm doing and uh, I apologize for that I was still trying to figure out the uh, the proper way to keep my head tilted and all that jazz so you can and keep my hands where I needed them to be so you can see the proper amount of um, brushing and still have the same amount of me talking and I'm sorry if you guys get bored of me talking so much I uh, would probably edit a lot of this out but you know again software isn't the best nor uh, allowing me at the moment I'm just gonna there we go alright I think I'm gonna leave that alone if I can remember which end is, is more dry which I'll probably find out later Alright, down to the head, which, you know, just a reminder, we are just doing a base coat of the white, so you don't really need the um, magnifier yet. So we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to coat this. And, um, word, word to the wise, or, or to the inexperienced, whichever way would better suit what's going on here. Um if you happen to have a large amount of paint and it's being applied to a, a very small area if you just keep brushing it around it'll find ways to dig itself into a lot of the crevices especially in the eyes so that way later on when uh, you need to you know go in and 
draw pupils or or something like that you won't need to take as much time to go back and nitpick at where it all didn't get in but you've got to make sure you brush it all over the miniature whoa oh damn well not a total loss you know I was holding on to that head pretty the head bit um, the front of the head pretty pretty hard so I'll just cover you up with a little bit of paint there we go sorry for the sudden you know tilt of the head there but um, my neck's been killing me for the past couple of days and the way I've been sitting I've been kinda hunching over so adjusting myself accordingly and um, for anybody wondering uh, yes I will probably go through every single miniature I have in my lizard man collection just as, just to show you know variants in in color and um, probably design patterns and whatnot. So uh, if I remember right, I've got somewhere up upwards of like uh, uh, twelve. I'd have to look at my book, but it was somewhere up to like twenty six or so pieces. Uh, and by pieces I mean units so we're looking about you know maybe 20 30, 30 to 40 videos of just this and um, no not all of my my builds will be uh, not all of my builds but not all of my videos will be entirely based on um, you know most of the paint in here and then a five or six minute video that somehow turns into an hour long video on assembly here uh, because I realized those were kind of bad Let's now um, I've heard about two techniques so far uh, through my little searches and uh, Two, two techniques that I've heard about so far are uh, dry brushing and um, uh, I can't remember the other term for the life of me but dry brushing was definitely one that I'd heard uh, that I, or at least come across and I'm not entirely sure upon the the, the way to go about dry brushing they say you take almost dried paint and use it to, you know, paint your miniature. And I've been doing that, but it doesn't quite look the way that they have been talking that it should look. So if any of you guys have an idea on how to better uh, dry brush or however that's supposed to go, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll try it out in the uh, next video. Alright, I think that white should be just about enough. So we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to do that. And um, while I think about it, we're just going to go ahead and we're going to start getting our base assembled. So give me a uh, moment here and we'll set up our... Oop. I hate it when this happens. And um, another quick request from anybody out there who knows how to do it. If you can tell me a way to keep my uh, super glue from uh, uh, gluing the cap to the, the needle point, 
I would really like to hear about that. Because so far, you know, it's... You know, needle cap, or point, uh, glued on to tip, which sucks. But yeah, uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set that aside and let it dry, because as I said before, this is a metal... Uh oh stick into my finger. Uh, it's a metal piece, meaning, you know, uh, it's going to need glue to hold it together better, and on top of that, it wouldn't make sense to put this onto there, and then from there here, to then here to there, when you can just assemble this ahead of time and then just set it out of the way and be like, oh, there we go, I'm done. Now we go on to uh, our uh, coloring. So, we're going to color this guy completely different than what we're going to color him for the sake of keeping them you know, uh, recognized as two distinct uh, beings. So the first thing I want to do is I want to start with the wings because again, largest amount of largest area and um, most most room for errors because sometimes you can make an error and it'll look really really cool. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to get in here and I want to get to these um, ridges really show off how those uh, ridges look. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with a um, what color should I start with? What base? Not base color, but what what second layer should I use that really drives in the the coloring? Um, dense jungle. All right, let's go like this. We're gonna turn these upside down, and we're gonna start there. And for some reason, that super glue is really annoying this finger. I think it's because it probably is burning into the skin a little, like an acid. Which is weird, because I've never had that problem before. But then again, I'm not really supposed to have super glue on my fingers, now am I? These are toxic chemicals and shit. But, um... Yeah. Um, let's see, base color, base color, base color. And I can't, I need to stop saying base color. Um, we'll use the, no, that black's no good. Is it? Is it any good? So, yeah, that's no good. That is like, oh, whoa, hi. How are you doing there? Actually, now that I look at that. I might be able to use that. What do you guys think? Think I could? I think I could use this. I think I could use that. So we're gonna leave that there. We're gonna work around that and see if we can't use it, because that might just come in handy. Might help for for actually being a, a good wash, even though it's technically a paint. Um, brown. Is this the good black? Please let this be the good black. Yes, it's the good black. Yes. Uh, let's see now, let's see now. I really don't like sticking to, you know, my greens and my browns, because it doesn't add as much individualism as I, as I want. But, unfortunately, that's probably what I'm going to have to wind up doing. So, at the very least, I'm going to make this guy a red. I'm going to make him a dark red. And so, to do that... We're going to start with our uh, red there. I just love it when these look, you know, like a proper paint. And, and like I said, these are a couple of years old and some of them are completely useless, but these so far are like beautiful, beautiful colors. Alright, so now we're going to need smaller, not, not really a smaller brush, probably somewhere around the same as what I was just using, but um... Yeah, we're probably just going to go with what I was just using, but we're going to try to avoid this part here and this area. And the reason we're going to avoid those is mainly to uh, make sure that the the structure of the of the actual of the skin 
or not the structure of the skin, but the 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 uh, wing bone here or wing bones will look different than the uh, the rest of the the wings. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to start lightly brushing on this piece. And the reason I'm starting out so started out on the ground was to make sure I got into the earlier ridges. There we go. And it's not going to be perfect, you know, because the the more layers you do, the uh, heavier some colors are going to show up and others won't, but at the same time it'll uh, let you cover up certain mistakes and all that. It's, you know, oh, oh, well, I did say it's all about, you know, fixing mistakes, which is, I guess that's pretty good. So let's go here. Make sure we got it all, all up in there. And that's actually the tricky part about some of these metals is, um, but also a beneficial part is if you can't really t is in the die cast pieces and also if I hadn't done this in white um, to begin with you couldn't really tell what would show up and what wouldn't so you kinda had to just trust your gut on it but the die cast metal if you were just going straight out of the gate with a dark color like this and you wanted to um, you wanted to see if you'd left anything out there. The metal would show up and uh, let you go, let you know, hey, you need to fix this part here. Unless, of course, you were doing it completely on purpose, in which case you would go, eh. But um, I'm just going to check out how this black, you know, glob that we have here lying around works. And the way it looks is it is probably going to either be an ink or a wash or something like that, but it never hurts to just throw it on there. Yeah, it's going to be a wash. And I'm applying this very liberally for the sake of uh, making sure I get everywhere in these creases. And it actually it looks like it's dulled down the color, which is a bad idea for me because I wanted that to be a very bright red before I dimmed it down. So that means I have to go back and see now, where is it, where is it, where is it, where did I put the, I had a rag sitting right here somewhere, where did it go, uh, I gotta go find something else, great. Okay, well, found it, and yeah, you know, it's supposed to look like grandmother's, uh, you know, favored piece, but you know, favorite rag or whatever, but hey, oh, one of the reasons why I like working close to the ground, there it goes, but uh, yeah, how the hell did that get attached, but yeah, let's, let's wipe all this out, now, if this were for, for, if this was for, uh, a more sci-fi-esque um, race like uh, Space Marines or, or something like that. This would look pretty cool. But uh, that's not what we're going for. We're going for tribal. So, go ahead and reapply 
that nice red. And this time I'm going to be very liberal with that red because I want that red to stay red. Oh, my dogs are going at it. And no, that, that doesn't mean that they're fighting. It just means that they're barking at nothing like most of the time they any other dog does. Alright, so we're going to leave you there. And we're going to go on to your brother here. We're going to, again, very liberal this time because I don't want another purple looking piece of crud from this. Just getting it all in there. I'm not even worrying about the the um, arm or the bone or, or whatever piece that that is now. I'm not even worrying about it. There we go. That actually looks a bit darker than the other, so I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna try and draw some of it off. Or darken it up. Darken up this piece here. It's another thing that's kind of weird about certain acrylic paints is they tend to lighten up over time. The reason I'm raising myself back is to get an idea of the comparison between the two. It seems like this is going to be where the real problem is going to be. There we go. We'll leave it like that. We'll leave that to dry. And uh, we might as well get this under, under bit too just to match. I don't know exactly how this is all going to come out. My, my choice of color is being very limited. I'm probably going to create something that's rather wild and probably not even close to a realistic death machine that uh, nature can produce. But hey, take everything in stride, right? If this doesn't work out the way we, we hope, it'll just be a learning experience and we'll find something else. So at the moment, I don't, I can't imagine anything that is bright red being a predator, you know, just soaring through the skies and uh, not being noticed immediately. But uh, again, that's just going to be something we're going to have to work on. I want this red because it's going to wind up being a darker uh, variant later, and hopefully, it'll look more intimidating and more monstrous than uh, the way it is now. I'm just going to set that aside. And I'll probably just wind up doing this head as well. Though th with all the bumps that are on the head and these couple of uh, protrusions, I might actually be able to make this guy uh, as bumpy as he is. might actually be able to make him uh, m uh, dual colored, which is probably what I was going to wind up doing anyway, but here it's just nice to know that I can do it better up on the head maybe show some visual markings to show he's been owned by a tribe or something Let's turn this like that. Oh no, I'm sliding over and I'm ruining it. Ah! See, this is one of those times where you can't really rely on the piece over here because it would just as 
well interfere with everything else. So I kind of have to roll with it. But I can turn it to hold the piece. There it goes. Just to hold it. Make sure I can get everywhere else. And then later on go back and deal with it. Alright, so it looks like this piece is just about dried, which will give me time to work on the that inking that I wanted to do in the first place. And I'm not gonna actually I should stop calling that inking because it's technically a painting. But it is still runny. Albeit not very. I am gonna add a little bit more water to it though. Make it more washable. And uh, in case any of you can't remember or are new and want to know why I did this, as uh, you know, as as a uh, washing uh, or mixing the water over here, it's because number one, this is a stainless steel table, albeit it's low to the ground, you know, here ground high. Uh, but it it makes it easy to clean up later. Nope, don't want to go there. I want to go here. And uh, if I'm remembering what I was taught about washes correctly, I'm going to have to go back and um, dab these. Just kind of stroke them down. Ah, that's where we run into our problem. This is eating off the other paint. Naughty, naughty. Which I guess is, you know, only, um, what am I thinking? What am I thinking of? What word is coming to my brain? Makes sense, should be the words that come out of my brain. Uh, it only makes sense because of the uh, the difference in, in the makeup from the two paints. So again, we're going to have to brush this guy, just wipe him the hell down. Going to be damn near a third coat before I get this right. Let's go ahead and we're going to... means more red. Alright guys, so quick analysis. Paints that have been sitting around for a couple of years from testers, not good for, uh, ow that was loud, not good for um, washing. Not good for washing when they come out like what, what they came out of in the video. And to uh, any testers representative that uh, is sitting out there in the audience for one reason or another, I am not in any way discrediting your company. I actually have mentioned your company quite a few times in various good manners here. And uh, I'm only showing the pros and cons of aged paints as well as aged um, anything really when it comes down to anything from testers as well as from other companies alright so well that one dries again we'll try using a black from here to, uh, to wash with
And the reason I'm suddenly moving this to uh, the area, the bigger area, is because I just remembered this is more for mixing large um, quantities of color. Now, I wouldn't say really large quantities, but it can be used for that. I want to say more uh, for, for making washes and such. Whereas back there is just for like really small amounts that you know what you're doing. And as we've all learned through these past couple of videos, I have no idea what I'm doing. Probably half of what I'm saying is coming straight out of my ass. So take everything what I, uh, that I say with a grain of salt. Uh-oh. Water everywhere. And yes, this is perfectly fine to do, since the water is only, you know, changing color, and not actually altering its color. Chemically speaking, and all that fun jazz that I have no time to remember how to how it works but yeah this should be nice and and watery I guess it could add more water to it This water is just getting everywhere. I'm sorry about that, guys, but it's very hard to figure out how watery the solution is. But I think it's pretty bogged down. There we go. Oh, shit. We're again brushing away the Okay, so I'm going to have to be very light, very gentle. With how I do this, I have learned that lesson. There we go. And um, for anyone concerned about about the way the water's pouring down, don't be too put off by it. it it's going to fill up in nooks and crannies, and it's going to be really cool the way that it does it. But um, one of the issues that I'm seeing with doing washes is I guess you have to completely wait for a lot of your paint to dry. You know, like maybe um, leave it a alone for a day or two or something. I'm not really sure because I'm still learning how to balance my washes as well. So while we leave that alone, let's move on to this, which I'm pretty sure is just waited forever to get its neck painted. Ring is all messing around here. Alright, let's get you all painted and dark and menacing. Okay. Just taking a quick hand check here, guys. Making sure you can all still see what I'm doing. I'm starting to slouch again, so I'm trying to make sure I get everything I'm doing. Um, there was a trick that someone in a, in a video showed me, but I can't remember which video, and I don't have it bookmarked or anything like that, and... Uh, my history isn't showing it either, but there was a video I saw that spoke about keeping your, your paints from rubbing off and flaking when you put them on. Uh, if anybody can find that video or if they know this technique, 
and would like to share it with me for the purpose of future videos, I'd be very, very grateful about it. Because you can tell this guy's just flaking left and right. And it also, it really kind of sucks because the more paint I have to put on him, the less detail we're going to get out of him. But he is starting to look a little frightening. Yeah, I'm doing a quick hand check because I can't tell how well you guys can see my hand. Alright, now we're just going to leave you alone. Like that. Oh, nope, there it goes. Eh. There we go. Alright. <sighs> this is, again, pretty bogged down, so we're just going to go ahead and we're going to start on this actually I'm actually being very very light and very gentle because I know this paint is going to flake if I put any sort of pressure on it but now you guys can see the reason why uh, I went with a very light uh, a very white base instead. Let's see now. Again, having to be very, very gentle in my swipes. Let me do dry off the brush a bit kind of smooth it around there we go and um, I'm not gonna worry too much about where it you know where the, the dark actually winds up placing itself because at that point I can just go back and touch up on it again There we go. Alright, so. For the now, the trouble piece. Again, being very, very light and very gentle. And I'm pretty sure the light of that lamp is putting off everything. Because it's glaring right at me. When I leave it laid down like that. Alright, let me turn this way. And go like that. There we go. Let me just get up in here. Uh oh. No worries. Just a little extra of that. Dry that off. There we go. Now we're just going to move this down a little. There we go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not exactly the most, you know, camouflaged piece of work out there, but I think it's doing a good job. My brush is just completely bogged down with that black now. Oh, yes, gotta remember. Have to let those dry entirely before. Oh, pardon me. Before we move on to that. 
I seem to have gotten the hiccups. Moving on to this guy. Let's see now. Let's see here. Let's see. Just absorb all that water out. All right, now. What color are we going to put on for this little guy? I really wish the wire in that would stop making me worry. Keep thinking that light's going to blow up on me. Let's see. I'm going to go with... Oops, sorry guys. I have a habit of... Uh, Rolling my brush around in my mouth sometimes. It's a habit. Let's see now. Mm. I think we will go with a brown. But which brown to go with? Burnt umber or burnt sienna? Which is darker? We'll go with burnt umber. Alright, now. If we take a few minutes to let that dry. I'll come back when I know this is ready to go. Even though I would start on this guy. But there's also another matter I have to attend to. So, let's go ahead and get that taken care of. And we'll be back in just a bit. Alright, and we're back. Sorry about leaving so abruptly about like that, but uh, my back was killing me and needed some chiropractic help. Uh, and no, I did not leave for a chiropractor appointment. I just happened to have somebody who's very good at this at that particular area of medicine living in my home. Which I actually, should probably do it this way. I would do it with the other cloth, but the other cloth is you know covered in paint, and that would probably make my stuff worse. All right, so on to painting this guy because I'm pretty sure this is not done yet. Except for this guy. This guy could be uh, tinted, but I'm not going to tint him yet. And you can see a uh, quick, quick show of what washing can do. Um, whoop. Original color we put on. How it, it looks now. And I don't think it's such a bad thing. I mean, if I go this way, I can get in and highlight the ridges which I want to do to uh, get in there and I'm probably going to leave some of that metallic stuff um, or that, that metal showing through but I can also just go in and go dab 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 real quick just lightly go back over it and I think that's gonna you know sort of ruin this but at the same time I don't really think so I'm just gonna really darken up that shade which is what I wanted to begin with. And it looks like this is actually dark enough for me to, to work with. So, the problem is though, I'm using too wide a brush than I should. So I'm probably going to have to go back and darken those again. This is just one of those progress, pro um, not progress. Uh, one of those moments where uh, you you just experiment and your experiment either works or it fails and you're, you're still going to wind up proud of it either way because it, it shows a level of, of progress anyway we're going to go on to this guy and if I rem and as I mentioned before the quick you know cut off um, burnt umber is what we're going to go work with mainly because it's a very dark color especially for a brown Give me, give me that. Thank you. You guys are probably sitting there thinking I'm wasting a lot of my paints. By the way, I'm just filling up these most of the time when I have such small pieces, and you're probably right. But um, given how much I paint, I don't really think it's that big a deal. 
Especially when most of it comes globbed like that. Get down, get down in there. Yeah. Okay, I think we solved it. Beautiful. Now, where did my... Uh-oh. There it goes. Where'd my rag go? Is it under me anywhere? Pay no attention to the bags or the man behind the curtain. Ah, screw it. I've used my jeans before, I'll use them again. It's not a big whoop. Uh, but I do want to know where the hell the damn thing went. Oh, pfft. It's underneath my thigh. You guys are probably somebody's gonna be making a joke about that somewhere along the line, and I am not gonna be ashamed of it. All right, so we're gonna see how this works. Actually, it's giving them kind of a bronzy color with the way that white is sitting, which is kind of cool. But uh. Yeah, he's actually going to wind up looking pretty cool with that. I might not even have to tell him this guy. Yeah. I'm liking this. I am liking the way you are coming out, sir. You might be the crowning jewel of the whole damn thing. Of course, I don't want to fuck this up, so I'm going to make sure I pay a lot of attention to this guy when it comes down to detail work. Get out of there, glob. Don't need you. Get right up in there. Make sure I got that tail nice and good. Yeah, that's a pretty good looking uh, skink right there. Ta da! And now the trick is going to be going back later with a. Uh, burnt sienna instead of a burnt umber and getting the, sh the, uh, the shaft of the spear So we're going to put this down, we're going to go back to these pieces, which actually, now that I remember how the uh, technique uh, for highlighting a wash or highlighting in general works, let's just get all up in, there it is. Had to get all up in the bucket, or the cup of... Uh, Blah. These videos are supposed to be helping me learn how to speak, and instead they're actually kind of hindering just a little bit. Alright. Let's go. And we're just going to dab up a little. And here's where we're going to bring this guy out. Ta-da! Savior of the world! I just don't want you biting off all the paint. You got that? Alright, so. Uh, 
this is going to be awkward. I hate it when it gets awkward like that. I'm going to find a way to do this eventually. Oh yeah, that's right. I can hold it this way. Silly me. Actually, yeah, that'll work. Just, uh, let me take that. Yeah, and we're gonna, just gonna do this. A neat little feature I've seen as of right now. And I'm pretty sure I saw it in a previous video, but, you know, as things tend to be, I can completely forget what I'm doing. My dogs are over. There it goes. Let's see now. Ta! Let's make sure you're all the way on there now. There it goes. Knee. There we are. And this is going to be the one that folds down. Alright, so let's get it. Let's start working on this here. Need a really detailed brush. I know I've got a small enough brush in here somewhere. That should do it. This is not going to be the most elegant work. What I think I'm going to do, I'm sorry if I'm tilting out of screen again. Actually, it doesn't look like I am, but I keep thinking I am. I had one of the more articulate, articulate setups. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go into the grooves, and then it's gonna be my highlight. The grooves are going to become my highlights. Not the rises, but the grooves, and that should help point out. Oh, hi there. Some difference in level. I don't know if you guys can see into this as well as I can or or not, but at this point with uh the underside, I guess you could say I'm just going for good enough, which 
albeit to say it's gonna this is gonna be one of my tougher monsters to conquer because um well pterodons do not seem to work well with me for some reason which is fine I mean it just it's just gonna be one of those where you have to go back and keep at it and keep at it and eventually it's gonna be your strong suit and it's it's gonna be one more thing to knock off the list whoa -oh. dropped it what do you guys think I think that looks pretty good and as for the others I'm probably just going to leave these the way they are, aside from a few minor, you know, details coming up here. But I think the real work is going to be on on this side, the part most people are actually going to see, and. Getting to that, I should probably paint this all very red. My legs are acting a little weird. One of the downsides to sitting the way I do when I do these videos. Ooh. There we go. And yes, I'm going to wash this as well, because it only seems fair. However, I'm going to need some more of my red. And I don't know where that went. There it is. I'm not going to need much. That should about do it. But yes, uh, when it comes to washing, uh, if I remember correctly from a um, from someone I had learned from, you're supposed to wash the entire miniature when you do washes. Otherwise, it just looks half-assed and doesn't really look as believable. And it takes away from the, the hard work you did to get it where it's at. But um, that isn't to say there aren't ways of, you know, washing one side and then not washing the other. Because I'm pretty sure there are uh, an abundant or numerous ways you can do it. It's just for the sake of things right now, I, I myself will not try to wash one way and then not wash the other way. lot of residual paint. Alright, so let's just brush, 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 brush. There we go. 
And I would brush up this end, but if I remember right, that end's going to have the wing attached, and we don't need that going on. Alright, I, I know what I'm going to do. Bear with me because I'm going again I'm again going to try and experiment. Hopefully this one will actually this part of it will actually look better than the other. So first we're gonna prime this up for washing. Which again means more uh, red is going to be needed for the other side. There we go. Ta-da! And uh, this guy over here, the way he looks right now, I'm gonna say he's already been toned up. I don't think ever any I've done any real washing on him, so we're just gonna leave this guy as is, except for the kind of shiny parts on the back end. Don't like it when sh when the metal comes through like that sometimes. But that's all in the name of the game. Yeah, it happens. You gotta roll with it. Yeah. Alright, back on to our amazingly brown pterodon rider. <clears throat> Look at that bad boy. Let's go and work on his, sh his uh, spear tip, shall we? For the spear tip, I am probably going to go and use... Uh, You know, I might just leave the blade itself white, but back everything else with some black. Or a gray in this case. So that's actually what I'm going to do, is I'm going to wash this down with a gray. And the reason I'm going to wash this all black to get that gray is, uh, I guess it makes more of an artificial silver, silvery tone. here and I've got to brush all that in so da, 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 da. 
and we'll just leave that to be like that and we'll just prop it up a little all right let's go back to this piece Here comes my little experiment. And I don't know if doing this to the brush will actually help me at all, but it never hurts to try. Okay, so first I'm going to load this up a little, and then just. A well, actually, first I got to wash. Uh, wash it all down. The wings are where I'm going to do my uh, experiment. And it's going to be right about here. What I'm trying to do is get more of a stripe uh, pattern. to go across it but I don't really think it's gonna work like that so instead I'm just gonna leave these kinda like this and see where it all goes but I think it'll probably wind up looking pretty good um, let's get this colored so it'll at least look consistent Now we got to go to the side. Let's go like this. set you down and then we'll pick you up and we'll do the same thing let's go up and we'll just brush down the side Oh, oh, shit. All right, we're going to leave that there. somehow don't know if I did it myself or if it was just the way I laid the piece but somehow our little warrior got turned or teared on rider turned to the side and actually that did a beautiful job of what I wanted it to do so just to get a look at that that is just beautiful that looks like a real well-worn um, piece of material there and I'm just shifting myself around so we've gone down to that we're gonna let our pieces dry as for him might as well just weather him down this is probably gonna be one of my least detailed builds simply because of the way the pterodon is 
designed and as ex inexperienced as I am. But I'd say for inexperience, I'm doing a pretty darn good job. Just gotta let me turn him upside down on the neck a little. There we go. Ta da! Alright, now. Yeah, that'll work. That'll work. <clears throat> Not quite as, you know, deadly or as eventually intimidating as I wanted it to be. And I'm going back simply because it just doesn't seem to look right. Just letting it do bits and pieces like that. Got to be very light. Once again, um, you know, guys, if you have any 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 uh, tips or tricks that I can try out, let me know and. I'll try and use what I can, or learn what I can, and try to incorporate it into my other projects, slash painting videos, and all that other good jazz. Uh, let's see now. Take a look at this guy. Doesn't seem to be a whole lot I can do, given the, uh, the work I've got. But, um, I don't think that's ever stopped me before. But then again, that's saying I've had slightly bigger pieces to work with. Again, Skink, Pterodon Rider. Skink, Pterodon. Technically, there's more room to work with on this guy, but at the same time, it's a bit harder to work with this guy. Namely because I don't know exactly how to make that particular creature look. I could always look into my books, but if I look in the books, I'm not sure I'll be happy with the colors they chose. I've always been one kind of just to go, let me color it my way. But while we wait for that to dry... I'm going to go ahead and pull this back into view. And, um, um, there was something I was going to say about these, but I can't remember what it is. And I don't think it's going to matter later on. Let me just clear this all off a little. See what I mean, though? Stainless. Nothing you can't get out. But uh, I should probably not be soaking my number four brush in some water. Should probably should not be doing that. So we're going to do that. Now. That's just about done. Time to glue, I suppose. First, I want to make sure I've got everything in the proper uh, set. Good. Time to pull this out. Alright, just uh show you guys how stuck on this can be. Let me wrap around and grab these flat nose pliers over here. Nope, nope, those are my bolt cutters. Where are they? There they are. My flat nose pliers.
gonna need my needle nose as well. This is the first time I've had to use two both sets of pliers. Uh, I'll be nope, that's a, a wrench. Uh, don't know why my wrench is out. I don't need my wrench. Screw it. I use the other pair. Come on. There we go. Ta da. Very strong as super glue and very encasing. Anyway, time to get down to business to defeat the Huns. Did they send me daughters when I asked for sons? You're the saddest bunch I've ever met, but you can bet before we're through. Somehow I'll make a man out of you. I'm sorry, I'm a horrible singer. Um. Oh no! Quick, get it back into place before the glue lets up. Oh no! It took a strip of the paint! You bastard! You bastard glue. Give me back my finger. E. I'll have to worry about my finger later. First things first. Let's make sure that wing is repaired. Why am I still messing with my finger? Not going to be as pretty. This whole pterodon has just been a disaster. I'm not gonna lie. It's a disaster. And this is probably one of the worst uh, miniatures I've ever painted. And that goes f uh, for my craftsmanship as well as the actual, you know, uh, yeah, just goes to my craftsmanship. It's the worst I've ever done. for a miniature and I'm sorry you guys have to see this but it does contain some useful information mostly how not to to do a pterodon I guess alright just gonna set that down gently and then we're gonna get the our little jewel. I'm probably gonna just mess with one more thing before I get him on there. It's actually probably gonna be a bad idea, but I am a king for bad ideas. Or I should say I'm a uh I don't know. Uh you know, again Trying to help myself learn how to speak, but it's not really working. Okay, first we're just gonna get so much hair lying around everywhere. Okay, let's get this. T. 
too. Damn. Chunky. And again, I guess it does add more of that barky look to it. Nee. Ooh, get down, get down, get down. Don't get so close to the the brown of the gem. Get away, Ghibli bit. Yeah. I've got to be like freaking nimbles here. Yeah. 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 Nee. There it goes. Alright. I didn't mess it up too badly. Not too badly. Still looks like a gem. Alright. Now. Just gonna lay them like that. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna lightly manipulate put a little bit of pressure there and we're going to take this little stem and just gently work it in there No doubt you can tell that some of these have been designed to be uh, off-centered with the way the hole has been placed to give that kind of swooping effect, I suppose. Come on. Come on, super glue. Come on. Come on. Stay there. Day. Okay, you're staying. That head's probably going to fall off in a little bit, but I don't have time to worry about that now. There we go. Now we just sit the rider on top. glue this on before any more of the glue starts working its way through. We set that up. Let me get these out of the way. But yeah, now some pretty strong uh, super glue, especially on his lid. And um, there you have it. I guess you could call this a bit more of a washing tutorial than anything. Um, and a how not to draw, or not to how not to not draw. How to uh, not paint a pterodon. As I think I fucked this up pretty bad. Pretty damn bad. This is probably going to be one of those where I go back and do a remake video. Where I just completely go back and re repaint this guy. But for now, we're just going to leave him be. You know, um... Again, testers acrylics, if they're more than a couple of years old and they pour out like they did in the video, don't use it as a wash. It's not a good idea. Reds, even though, even though they've got you know the toxic chemical in them, they're much better off than your non-toxic testers cement. I don't know why that even is... Uh, uh, made if it sucks for keeping your models put together. Um, next week, we're either going to start working on... Oh, hey, look. Plastic sinks. I have die-cast metal. And plastic sinks. Interesting. But, um, we're probably either going to start on doing a small 
five minute video on jungle swarms. Da 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 da. Let me get this in the light so I can give it a better da da da. Yeah, uh, you know, little creatures that fit on a piece of land. If you can squeeze like two or three of them on there, um, you can actually make a jungle swarm for the lizardmen, which is a very useful little uh, unit. And um, if you can't, then you, it's just good for decoration. I just find it easier to turn them into the jungle swarms. Uh, but yes, we will begin on either the jungle swarms, the skinks, or some other unit that to work on. Uh, more than likely another diecast metal piece since uh, the diecast metals are probably going to become a little uh, more fun to work with since, you know, they're white. And uh, these being black, they make a darker color. But anyway, that's it for this one, guys. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Leave your comments below. Leave your suggestions and any of my other videos in their respective comments. Be nice to each other in the comments. And, um... Uh, man, my brain is fried. Um, if you have any suggestions for future videos, leave those below as well. If you have any tips and tricks, you know, leave it alone. You know how much today was. Anyway, um, be safe. Uh, watch each other's backs, and you know, keep each other safe and all that. Uh, don't want to see you all on the wrong end of the newspaper. Uh, so long, my little hatchlings, and uh, see you next time.